here's the Ferro ZF1 or whatever it's called and it has a kind of a shutter thing to reduce light coming in and then here's the reticle so the the dots on top you see the one to two two right there on the house that's 100 meters 200 meters 400 meters and then the T's at the bottom are for an MG42 or a Panzerfaust and then the T's on the left and right are for uh, leading a moving target some kind of like vehicle with said Panzerfaust or MG42 so there's like a sun because this tube I don't think it's auto gated so there's this sunshade thing to limit the amount of light coming I guess for urban environments uh, which makes sense and then here's the reticle you can definitely tell it's it's a gen 2 tube because it does this just like streaking <laughs> Uh, I think it's oversaturation, it's oversaturation of the micro channel plate, but I may be confusing that with the black, the dark, opaque lines. Here's just drawing like an etch sketch. Trippy, trippy, trippy. Okay, so here's uh, Gen 3 PBS 30, and then I'm going to go to the uh, ZF1 from Faro. Uh, supposedly it's a Zeiss company. So it's kind of hard to tell on this camera, but the Gen 3 is clearer. Uh, there's no moon at all. It is dark. But I'm really impressed with how well this Gen 2 can see. Oh, the car's coming. So this is my, I think it's Belgian or something. Uh, the phone is making it brighter than it really looks. It's really dim and it has a Crosshair reticle, that's it. Ignore that, that's a LiDAR bouncing off the screen and coming back in my, you know, my phone. So yeah, uh, it's not bad, but it's definitely not as bright as the Ferro ZF1 or called. So I got the Aurora Pro behind my, I think it's Belgian night vision scope. And it's definitely helping amplify the light. Uh, coming out of the tube. All right, it's not bad. An image, 530 yards away. Really not bad. Let's move the tripod around a bit. This is all Gen 1 Cascade, I think. Super old tube, but not bad with the Sonic Aurora behind it. 